In the beginning, the Constitution of the United States gave Congress the power to mint coin and determine its value. The first dollars were silver dollars and gold eagles. Many years later, silver certificates substituted the circulation of silver dollars. Treasury certificates gave people a right to have their paper dollars repaid in gold coins. In 1971, President Richard Nixon unilaterally canceled the convertibility of the United States dollar to gold. Today, a dollar bill is not a Treasury certificate, but a Federal Reserve note issued by the Federal Reserve System, which acts as a central bank. So, let's face it, dollars no longer represent silver or gold. Today, a dollar is fiat money. Today, it is debt, issued by different institutions. So, not all dollars are created equal, although they are meant to be equivalent. So, it is the law that creates the dollar as a standard unit of measurement and allows the same word to mean very different things. The dollar structure is a big loop. Dollars flow from the Federal Reserve System to the commercial banks, then to big businesses, merchants, and people. At every step of the way, a different dollar is created because dollars represent debt and the solvency of the subscriber of the debt matters. Commercial banks, however, are allowed to lend out 10 times as much money as they borrow from the Federal Reserve. Call this money the checkbook dollar. Whether you deposited dollar bills, a check, or got credit, your bank account will show checkbook dollars which are as accepted as dollar bills to pay for goods and services. However, just as a dollar bill does not have gold or silver behind it, checkbook dollars do not necessarily have Federal Reserve notes backing them up. History shows what can happen if a bank becomes insolvent. Panic among depositors. Should that happen today, your bank statement will show your checkbook dollars, but your ATM simply won't churn out any dollar bills. The reason is this, dollar bills are preferable and 10 times scarcer than checking account dollars. I say that credit card vouchers are yet another kind of dollar, but this time it is not an IOU from the Federal Reserve, but rather an IOU from you to the credit card company, produced within the same dollar creation loop. It is the establishment of a standard which allows the creation of dollars with a different origin. For instance, a Macy's dollar owed to a bank may be more trustworthy than a Minimart dollar owed to the same bank. When you buy merchandise on credit from Macy's using the store's credit card, the Macy's dollar value depends on Macy's collecting your I owe Macy's dollar. In this way, millions of different dollars are born every day. Every credit card IOU is a dollar of sorts, which is backed with the assets of the cardholder. I call this the recursive theory of money creation because it is a repeating process which is embedded in the same money creation and repayment loop. Economists have a name for each amount of different quality dollars in circulation. Money created by the Federal Reserve is called M0. It includes paper bills and coins, plus the commercial bank's bank accounts with the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. M1 is another measure that includes the amount of money held in checking accounts. M2 adds saving accounts, 
and M3 adds time deposits. I suppose for M5 or M6 should be the amount of money or debt created directly by the public. Taxes paid to the Treasury closes the money creation loop, so the dollar loop is only as strong as its weakest link. Because of interest charged on debt, the money masses grow on their own. Then, if for whatever reason people overspend and cannot generate enough product and services to exchange for money to pay their bills, the chain breaks and the whole dollar structure collapses. The irresponsible creation of debt at any level is like playing the game of musical chairs. For instance, when the music stops, people caught with checkbook dollars are unable to exchange them for dollar bills. The music can also stop if all holders of treasury bonds show up to collect their payment at the same time. China, Japan, Great Britain, Brazil, and the oil exporting countries, among others, hold several trillion dollars worth of treasury bills, which are yet another kind of dollar owed directly by the U.S. government. The world financial crisis can be explained in a few words. The gigantic dollar creation loop went out of control at many places. The USA built many more homes than its people knowingly could afford, and the banking system could not resist the huge short-term profits. Americans now basically have three options. To work more, work better, and sell more abroad as a way to increase the dollar purchasing power so the international creditors are willing to wait to get repaid. Two. To save more and rebuy the tea bills in the hands of China, India, Brazil, etc. 3. Pay more taxes so the U.S. government can rebuy the tea bills. I hope this video about the recursive creation of money and debt has been useful.